uh, to bring up gold now as we're speaking, the metal above uh, 2,000 an ounce. You know, CNBC is covering gold again, Lynette. So you, you know that's got to be a sign. Um, and on a day that China has announced that they're buying, that they've bought more gold, so they keep adding to their gold reserves. I mean, is the window just open for gold now? Is it okay to to embrace gold by the mainstream? <laughs> Let me have those days arrived. Well, I think more and more people are getting more and more nervous as they're watching what's happening. Um, what I'm kind of looking for, so I'd say yes, mainstream. We should because we vote with our wallets, we vote with our purses. So if you buy stocks, that's your vote. If you stay in dollars, that's your vote. If you buy cryptocurrencies, that's your vote. And if you buy gold and you buy silver, that's your vote. If more and more people vote for this and they now have real money that's outside of the system that's global, no matter where you are, and, and regardless of the form, gold and silver are monetary at its base, that's your vote. And then they can't pull it off if enough of us do that. So two questions for you, because this is one I get asked often. Okay, we see it as a, a way out of the system, but many people wonder, okay, what happens when I have to liquidate that gold? Mm -hmm. Am I not just re-entering the system? Yes, you are, because... As long as the central banks get to dictate what our tool of barter is, then there are going to be some things you'll be able to do completely out of the system. There, I'm sure there'll be a black market that evolves. But if we need to pay a mortgage or a tax bill or buy something like right. that, sure. So you just liquidate it into whatever the tool of barter is and you use it, but you don't liquidate all of it. Because do you really want them to have that control? There's, and I guess the other uh, part is, um, you know, if central banks were buying gold, you know, people were wondering, well, were, were they suppressing the price down in order to be buying the gold? Um, but now that maybe, you know, one of the main buyers, China, has perhaps sufficient gold now have they done their buying and we might see the price run up? I mean, it's a lot of theories circulating. Just want to know what your thoughts are on central banks related to the price of gold. Well, you know, in the spot market, they can create as much gold that doesn't exist and suppress the price. And they need to do that because that's their perception management. Admitted. I mean, they admitted it. Um, because a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. And once you really understand that the currency is failing, then you make different choices. I mean, a trillion times zero is zero. It, it really is that simple. So it doesn't matter how many pieces of paper you have or digits in your bank account. What matters is what you can convert them into. So even above $2,000 an ounce, you are not seeing gold or silver, frankly, express anywhere near its true fundamental value. And the fundamental value is really based on the most important function that gold performs, which in my opinion is to hold your purchasing power intact over time, right? And we would see gold way above 15,000 if they weren't suppressing it. But central banks don't need to suppress the price to be able to buy more of it because they can create they push a button, they create all the money they want to buy the gold. It's about you, them not wanting you to buy the gold. Because especially in collectible form, it is truly invisible to them. And this is not as likely to be a form that would be confiscated because you can have an ounce of gold go for like 15 million bucks at this point. And so... They don't want you to be buying the gold. No, no. Because once you buy the gold, it's invisible to them. Even the Bank for International Settlements, gold held at home, runs no geopolitical risk. Gold is the only financial asset that runs no counterparty risk. These are from the Bank for International Settlements. And this is why, because I know I've asked you in other interviews of why you don't hold crypto. But it's exactly to that point. Um, 
you know, because I was going to ask you if you're getting, if you're opening your mind to the concept of Bitcoin giving, giving the bank run. I, I'm, you know, my mind is, is open. The challenge that I have with Bitcoin is simply that I only see its functionality in one place and nobody has been able to expand that. So in other words, what, what I think is really good about Bitcoin is you can hold a lot of them on a little thumb drive and stick it in your pocket and go anywhere in the world. I think that is a great advantage, but I don't see any other functionality for Bitcoin. Whereas with gold and silver as well, physical, not digital, physical, it's used in every single sector of the global economy. So therefore it has this broad base of functionality. I mean, it's used in, it's used in the financial system, but it's also used in medicine and electronics and space travel and art and food, you know, et cetera, and more. Um, so when I'm going into a fight, I want something that has the most function. I don't want to go in with a teeny weeny little Swiss army knife. I want to go in with a bazooka and a cannon. And, and a tank. And, and so for me, that's the difference between the two. But if anybody yeah. can show me other functions, because I can buy that $8 million coin and take it anywhere in the world too. So I can move a lot of wealth in a small package. Maybe not as much mm -hmm. as Bitcoin. I mean, it kind of depends. But um, I just, you know... Please, if I saw it as a tool of barter, if I saw it in different functions, then I would feel better about it because I do think some are going to survive. And, and Wall Street yeah. has really adopted Bitcoin. So that could very well be the one that survives, but I don't think it takes you out of, outside of the system, not with the adoption of it in Wall Street. Lynette, we covered uh, a lot of ground today. Uh, I always ask you to just bring it home for the folks because I want to say I appreciate you. I love how you challenge my mind to go in different places and think outside the <laughs> box. You. So thank you. Um, and just, again, final thoughts. You're going to come back on a lot more, but <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> for right now, you know, for surviving the next month, let's oh, say. Oh, surviving the next month. Well, let's see. You know, we still have the yeah, short transition term. coming up between LIBOR and SOFR. But I would say that you got to dip your head underneath the water a little bit and to try and get an idea of that iceberg that's underneath because that is big enough to absolutely overwhelm the system. And right now what we saw in 2008 was the Fed bailing out the banks and what we saw in 2023 was the Fed bailing out the um, the venture capitalists and the technology companies that will help them usher in the new CBDC. So yeah. vote with your purse.